Good morning and welcome to Hakipu'uku'aloa Nava'a Festival, Canoe Festival. I see some people already getting in the action. I'm here with my ohana. There's Aaron. You can see the kids in the background. The festival is right behind me. So we're just getting started and uh, I'm excited for some of the training. We're going to fly the drone today. Um, and try to give some training on that, on the controls and things you can do. Uh, we're gonna show off the 360 camera, the GoPro Max. Um, I know most groups are wanting to check out those two things from the Kilo Kit. And then I want to share a little more on Polycam and some of the things that um, you can do on Polycam. And maybe some people will create free accounts today and Future Navigators has created an account that we can all access and use. So um, stoked for that too. Uh, yeah, going to head over and register the family and get people signed up. Um, and hopefully some of you will join us in the Zoom canoe today and maybe even some of you out here at the festival. So it's a beautiful day. Kane Kaneohe Bay. Yeah, it'll be fun. All right. I'm going to go to my Polycam app. Uh, it looks like this. You can see it on my screen. When I click it, it's going to open up um, all the way to um, be able to start collecting images. So I'm here with uh, the Kanehunumoku Voyaging Academy and their resources. And you can see them on the screen through the camera. And what we're going to try to do is create a 3D model of these resources, a digital 3D model using Polycam, just as a demonstration. So let's see how it goes. You can see on the screen right now inside Polycam, it's set the photo. If you have a new um, like iPhone 12 Pro or iPhone 13 or iPad Pro, then you can actually use LiDAR um, to create an even more accurate model. So let's see how it goes. I'm just gonna be moving around the Photo. So all I'm going to do is hit the photo button and every time I reposition the camera, it's taking another mo it's taking another image and it's going to collect up to 250 images in the pro account, which you guys all have that pro account available to you through future navigators. So if you have resources like this in your own community or organization, and you want to turn them into 3D models, we could also use this with uh, ecological artifacts, pohaku coral, different kinds of plants. We did this with the limule that we made in Waimanalo. So some of you have seen those already. But this is a really cool opportunity. And then if we do a good job, this model will become something that we can import into all kinds of virtual reality worlds, the metaverse all that kind of stuff, which sounds silly, but I think it's gonna become pretty commonplace, something pretty cool to do. So we'll see, you'll just see how the app works. So I'm trying to get as many angles as I can. It's gonna fill in the blanks on its own. It's really good if you get good music playing while you're doing this too. It makes the model turn out with a little more Aloha. Very cool. You don't tell me how many images I've collected. Doing this pretty quickly. So right now I think I have, oh yeah, 110, 111 photos it's taken. So once I done, I'm done with that, I can stop taking photos, click done. And this is gonna take a minute to process. And I have a few choices. If I wanted to process quickly, but not look as good, I select optimized or medium. If I want it to take longer, I'm okay with it taking longer. And this phone's the problem with that is the phone screen has to, this app has to stay open while it's processing. But if I want to take longer, I click full or raw. If it's a really detailed model, I click object masking. So I would just hit that on. But I'm gonna do this one quickly. So I'm gonna click optimize. I'm not gonna do object masking. And I'm gonna say upload and process. 
So now you all can get a sense. I might, I might fast forward on the recording, but those of you who are here live with us, see how long this takes. Right, so you guys can see it, that just finished processing, took a few minutes, even that optimized version, I had 112 images. Now I can leave the screen, it's gonna process. Um, when it's done, it'll show up. I'll just go back to, oops, sorry, just go back to the app. If I click back, you can see all the captures that I've done. This is the one that's still processing up in the upper left. Um, I created one of the drone yesterday, kind of sloppily, but this is our Phantom 4. You can see I can I can move it around. If I click on this AR button and then I move my phone around, I can actually get the drone to show up in AR. So let's see if this will work. Sometimes I gotta really, really move it around to get it to show up, but Oh, where'd, where'd she go? You can spot the drone. <laughs> Let's see here. Looking all around for it. That's the funny part about when you're moving your phone around and then you're like, where's the drone go? Oh, there she is right there. So you can see I can bring the, bring the drone out into virtual space. And, uh, Oh, don't don't step on my drone. And so now it's AR. So if I go a little bit closer, here, kind of hovering in front of me. Right, pretty neat. Can can spin it around. That screen if I want to. Um, but yeah, I'm able to take measurements of objects, all kinds of interesting stuff. Um, obviously, you know, with, with something that's really detailed, like, like the drone like this, the object masking and the, um, that sort of full processing power would have been helpful. I did this quickly. Also another sloppy but quick capture that I did make of Hokulea. And we can see, actually the, the better way to see this one is probably through the video. So this was when she was up on the carts on Thursday before we put her back into the water. So I'm just gonna go to my camera and I think I have a video stored. I'm gonna show Janet just what I did on Friday, I guess Thursday with Hokulea. So this was just in about a couple minutes. I was able to, I was able to create that. So, and uh, I, the video goes a little quickly, but you know, you could slow it down and you get, get in and can see all the individual laps. So. Oh, yeah, a little sloppy, but uh, pretty cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, and and uh, a little more time, and I think ours should be done in a couple minutes. I'll come back and show you okay. what show you what we made. Awesome. Thanks, Janet. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> hey, aloha. How's it? Good to see you. <laughs> I recognize you. <laughs> oh, good. They were useful for the report. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah, it was our pleasure. It was great to have you guys. I'm glad you joined us. That was so Wait, rad. No <laughs> yeah, how it's supposed to be. <laughs> Once we're, aloha. Once we're back, um, you can show that polycam model. But yeah, some people are starting to show up. I think we're getting the, the va ready um, to take out and go sailing, which I'll try to take you guys out for a sail too. I got my wristband registered. So all set and yeah, beautiful, beautiful day out here. So we've got um, the Kulani Akeas uh, resources out here, the star compass that we've all been getting familiar with, amazing stuff that they're making, educational resources out here. So super, super cool. Good to be out here and um, yeah, stick around. So I'll show that the polycam model and then maybe um, what I'll do on the one we go sailing, I'll kind of be demoing that 360 degree camera. So we'll, we'll put the 360 degree camera 
uh, we'll put that on a tripod and uh, on the tripod that I'm holding, uh, and we'll um, we'll go out. We'll, we'll we'll test out the that cam. So I'm gonna go get that set up. Um, but you guys are hopefully welcome to just kind of hang out. So yeah, we'll do the we'll do the 360 cam next. Um, a little training, hopefully. If you have any questions about Polycam, it's super easy to use. You only get five free captures with the free one, but you can create videos. You can export, um, not in very many formats, but you can export those captures. One thing that you're going to want to know is we'll talk about on Wednesday is Sketchfab. Um, Sketchfab is going to be a place where you can store those models. And that's where we'll store the ones that we create using the platform that future nav the polycam access that future navigators will give to you that's going to be a shared platform so um, we'll have a collection of 3d models for anybody who wants to create them uh, in that space so i'm going to set this down and get the get the gopro max out and we'll start setting that up but all right yes yeah, what i'll do kind of show us what we got here with the um the gopro max one's familiar with that polycam is just something you access through your phone you can also log in and access it online um, but um, the gopro max a little bit of hardware so it's going to come in this case this little gopro case and when you open that up let me see if i can let me see if i can set up set up the phone to, to kind of be able to show it so uh, when you open up this case it's going to have inside the gopro um the sd card i have a 64 gigabyte sd card that's already in here and it's on this little side panel that also allows you to charge it so i'll just click that up excuse me click that down and then i can open and inside here there's a little slot for the sd card and there's the battery but you don't need to take the battery out but you can plug in um, your usb-c goes in right there to charge the gopro and then when you close it especially if you're going to use it underwater but even if not you want to close it and then lock that again so it won't accidentally pop open yeah um, this is the power button on the other side. So you click that to turn it on. And this is what starts capture this button on the top here. It's got a red circle on it. You hit that and it starts capture. This is a little dome casing to protect the lens. It's not useful underwater. So if you do try to use the GoPro Max underwater, you have to take these off. But this just protects the lens above water. Underwater, it'll flood. It's not sealed. So water will get in there and then your image quality will be no good. Um, but those are on both lenses. So this camera has lenses on both sides, taking 180 degree images and video. Um, and then it stitches those together in the GoPro player, something we'll talk more about on Wednesday as well, along with Sketchfab. There will be a small tripod in here. So a small tripod and a pin, a GoPro pin. I have it today. I have the, the Max with the, a little tripod, larger tripod mount, because I'm actually gonna put this on the tripod that my phone's sitting on right now. And to do that, I just unfold these two little flaps there on the bottom, the pin goes right through. So I can unscrew, unscrew this right now. Can slide this, slide this in and hold that in place and then you just put the screw through the mount and we're gonna, we're gonna have this mounted to make sure and i'm getting all the way through to the bolt 
pull all the way through to that little nut on the end. That's how you make sure it's tight. You gotta kind of push that in. And now the hardware's mostly all set up. Um, what we're gonna do is try to make sure that that's level, that the, the flat bottom part of this base is level and tighten it all the way in. And then that's going to go on top of this small tripod that I have. But you could have done the same thing with that screw and this tripod here. It's just a very basic tripod. Which actually, maybe I'll do. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and set it up on here. And that way my phone can stay on the mount that it's mounted. So I can show everybody that really quickly. I'm just going to unscrew this mount. Hope everybody's having a great day, having a good weekend. You take that off. Oh, wow, they just put the sail up over there. You can hear the crowd go wild. It's really beautiful. So now just threading, threading this back through, setting it up on this small, small tripod. And trying to set it up so that it's going to be flat. I have to use the little cap on the end. Let me screw that in. We'll also have a little handle. One of the things about the GoPro and the reasons we set them on the tripod is that you want some separation from the person who's filming. So because you don't necessarily want it to be so close to the body because then one whole screen is just capturing a body. So I'm gonna zip this back up. We've got the GoPro mounted. Put this back in the pocket. Now we can kind of set this up when we go sailing on the canoe and can kind of see, you know, if you imagine my stand up board is the canoe, you can kind of set it up somewhere on the canoe like that. And it'll be set capturing 360 degrees. So pretty cool. Yeah. I love it. You guys can see the, the canoe's got they're getting their sails up and we're getting a little bit of wind. The wind is starting to pick up a little bit. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. Hey, whoa, hey. Check it out. Hey, this, this. No, actually go check it out. Look. Uh, similar to Ulubehi. Yeah, similar. These are oh, all double. A this is a regatta happening. <laughs> yeah. These are all double hauled. Um, there is one kind of triple like one single hull with the two outriggers but these are these are not outriggers most of them some of them are hey this kid Kupu and Miley and a friend so Melissa's on here and, and Koa and Lehua good to see you guys Koa Alaya look who it is <laughs> did you guys sign up you're gonna go sailing Nice. So we're gonna pick it out. Awesome. <laughs> Maybe if we get to go sailing together, do you want to do you want to set up this yeah. camera somewhere, yeah, sure. and we can collect that while we're sailing? We can ask them where the best place to put it would be, because yeah, okay. it's we didn't do it on Uluvihi. We didn't bring this out, but that's uh, that's gonna be our plan. And our next, I did a little poly camp session with um, Kanehunomoku's little voyaging canoe model and creating seeing if we can create a digital 3d model of it so actually i'm gonna with the with this app called polycam that uses uses uh similar technology so i'm actually going to share so melissa can see too this is what we this is what we built yeah oh they are starting hey Starting the festival. I just thank you all. Yeah, it's about a big hand for all the work that went into this. I'm so proud. I'm not old. 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 I'm not old
sit behind me that made it possible today for us to be here on this beautiful day. Again, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for coming. We came from afar. We came from next door. We came from right over here to be here today. So I thank you all and I applaud you for being here this day. And with that, I want to take this opportunity to introduce again and to open up this day with our protocol ceremony and pulu. I want to introduce my brother, Nico. Nico. Dr. Che and I, Dr. Che teaches uh, ukulele, and uh, Aloha Lani is one of our students from Akipulu Learning Center. And this, uh, this canoe festival is always held uh, in March, as close to Okulea's birthday as possible. And uh, so the birthday is uh, March 8th, but we're a little bit early this year. <laughs> so we're going to play the song uh, written by Boogie Kalama uh, while the Okulea was waiting in the doldrums in that purse canoe trip uh, to, to, uh, to Tahiti. And then lady over there, her name is Kogulea. And uh, uh, she was going, but Amara had to stay back. But she got the name of Kogulea. This is the song written by uh, a good friend of her dad, uh, Glenn Davis, written by Boogie Alam. Raindrops, they have for my vision. Falling down and cutting incision. Blow my cunning, shout jubilation. Carry us down to our destination. Millions of stars up in the 
Thank you very much, you folks. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right, we're uh, Aloha Future Navigators. We're still out at Hakipu'u Kualoa Canoe Festival. I'm just going to try to run a simple um, drone training. Um, my kids are going to help. Aaron, my wahine is going to help too by, by trying to film the drone controls. You're going to see um, through my screen what the drone camera is seeing. And then through her screen, um, you'll be able to see, um, you'll be able to see um, what, um, what I'm doing on the controls. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a great Saturday, March 5th. Uh, Okulea's birthday is March 8th. Um, so, and she was born here near where we are right now. So special spot, some good music and hula um, and oli today, a lot of haumana out here. So cool, thanks. So um, 
this is the controller and the way that it works is through uh, the DJI app. So I'm gonna, uh, right now I've got a lightning cord and a USB plugged into the controller. You can see that there. Um, I have the little phone holder um, with the little um, notches right here because that helps hold the phone sideways, which it's gonna need to be um, in flight mode. Um, the little antenna, you fold those out um, and then uh, I'm, before I turn it on, I'm just going to pull open. That, um, we can, everybody can see. So I'm going to stop my video for a second. I'm going to share screen. Start that broadcast. Microphone. Okay, so let's get out of that mode and go to, if I swipe over, and you can see the DJI Go 4 app. That's the app that you're gonna need for the Phantom 4. When I pull that up, you'll see this option to enter device. Um, right now it's disconnected. I haven't connected the drone, so what I'm gonna do is an Aaron will film this. I'm gonna hit the button. I'm gonna hit the button and then I'm gonna hit it again and hold it down until I hear that beep. And that means that my controller is now on and I can see all four lights. It's fully charged. The aircraft's still disconnected. I haven't turned that on yet. And Aaron's gonna film it. I'm gonna show us how to set this up so she can get a little bit closer and show off the case here. Hopefully you get a sense of the controller. We've got two joysticks. I'll show how those work in a moment. The battery is already in, comes in and out very easily. There's just a button, slides in and out, make sure it clicks in nice and tight. There's a protector over the camera and the gimbal. So we wanna, wanna take those off, take that off so that the camera is gonna have a good view. And then I need to put the propellers on. Some of you learned this when we were at Loco Ea. Okay, Oco Velo Velo. I'm gonna take the four propellers out and the propellers, you've gotta pay close attention. There's actually two sets, two pairs in here. And I'll ask Aaron to kind of zoom in. You see one has black rings around the center rotor. The other has kind of silver rings. And those actually match up. If she zooms in really close, you can see that these opposite motor rotors have black dots on them. And these have kind of white dots or silver dots on them. So that tells me the black ones are gonna go here and here, and the silver ones are gonna go here and here. And when I put them on, I'm just gonna press down and rotate a quarter turn to lock them in. So I just hold the motor so it doesn't spin, line it up and lock that in. Those turn to the left to lock. These are gonna to turn to the right to lock, opposite directions. Yeah, so this can take kind of a moment to practice to figure out, but now we have our rotors on, have our gimbal um, cover off. Uh, the drone is more or less ready to fly. So we are going to give it a little bit of space. Um, and in order to turn it on, on the battery, here, if you can just come and zoom in on this side, same as the controller, there's a button on the battery. I'm gonna push it once, and then just push and hold down. It's gonna give me a little notice that it's, once I've held it down for about two or three seconds, you'll hear the motors engage, the rotors engage. And now the drone is on, the controller is on, it should be, pretty much ready to go. Um, I don't need to take my knowledge quiz. You might want to um, just to check, um, but it says, gives me my status, um, how things are with my aircraft and looks like I'm all clear. And yeah, Aaron, can, if you can come just kind of stand behind me or next to me and film what I'm doing to control. So you guys can see what I've got on screen. Yeah, I'm gonna ask a line. The home point has been updated. Come over Please here check to the it on side. the map. We're clear, we're in the shade, but clear of the trees. You do wanna kind of be in some shade to be able to see your screen. Um, to take off, 
It's pretty easy. Cole, back up from the drone, please, son. I'm about to take off. Need to be more aware. That's a really good as a pilot. Everyone's safety around you is your responsibility. So you need to make sure that people are staying away from the drone during takeoff and landing. You're communicating with people around you. But I'm going to hit the little takeoff button. It's in the top left under DJI. When I hit that, it's going to ask me to ensure conditions are safe. Um, it's going to go up to an altitude of about four feet uh, and it's going to hover in place. So I'm going to slide to take off. Take off. The home point has As been updated. Please Aaron's check it on the map. To go higher, I'm going to use the left joystick. So if I push up on the left joystick, it's going to go up higher. You can see the drone moving up. If I want to bring it back down, I put down on that joystick. The harder I push, the faster it goes. The lighter I push, the slower it goes. Yeah. And then I can also turn the drone. If I go left on the left joystick, the drone turns to the left. If I go right on the left joystick, it goes to the right. And then the right joystick controls forward and backward motion. So I can fly the drone forward. You can see that on the video, it's slowly moving forward. And I can pull it back and fly it backwards to get that shot that's going away from an object as well. Flying it slowly backwards. If I go down a little bit faster, I can fly it backwards a little bit faster. Okay, the gimbal has a way to keep the camera steady, even though the drone is shifting positions, whether because of wind or fast flight. So I'm just gonna fly it forward pretty quickly to give you a sense of how fast you can go. Yeah, so pretty cool. And how fast I can pull away and go up at the same time. So I'm pulling away from the object. We're gonna fly it pretty high to get a nice view of where we are. I've got to keep it in my line of sight. Yeah, but there we go with a beautiful view of Kula. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm pretty high up now. I'm gonna bring it back so that it's over me. You can see the beautiful pond there. And what I'm gonna do now is just do a little, I'm gonna turn on the video. So I'm by clicking that red record button. And now I'm recording video and I'm just gonna turn her, the, the drone slowly to the left. And we're just gonna do a pan of the whole Hakipu'u Kualoa area, slowly turning to the left. You can see the va'a down there. Really nice shot of, of Kaneohe Bay. We'll get all the way around. We'll see the islands eventually coming around to Mokoli'i and the Kualoa Beach Park. And a nice shot. Now, all I'm doing is just on the left controller, holding just slightly to the left. And then we'll be back at the Kualoa range here in Hakipu'u. Yeah, so a nice video there. I'll click stop on that video and record. I look up and find the drone. I'm gonna fly, fly it forward just a little bit. I'm gonna bring it back till it's, you can see it kind of out in this open space above my head. There, so it's almost overhead right now. And now I'm just gonna show really quickly and it's doing a great job. Right now the camera's kind of facing forward, but on the, um, I'll let her film my left finger. You see this little um, rotator right there. As I turn that, the camera's gonna go down. So, and you'll actually see us, especially if I go stand out in the sun, I'm in the shade right down there, but. Now the camera's pointing down. So I have a way to control the camera angle, right? And I can start bringing, I can start bringing this down and you'll see right on the edge of that shadow, you see the drone slowly descending. So I'm gonna come bring it back down and then I'm gonna do from pointing straight down, I'm gonna do kind of an elevator shot. So 
to bring the drone down to ground level, close to it, start recording. And, uh, oh, I noticed there's a helicopter, right? Someone wanted a nice tour around Kualoa probably. So you gotta always, you can't go over 400 feet, wanna be safe when we're flying. But now the drone's down right here, Kualoa Beach Park. It's so sitting right in front of me. Aaron can maybe film it over there. You can see the drone in the video. And now I'm just gonna go up again, but I'm gonna click record so that we can now see the shot of the drone there in the shot. I'm gonna hit record and then I'm just gonna do an elevator shot straight up, kind of fast. I'll go up to about a hundred meters. And I'm gonna bring it back down. All right, now I'm at a pretty good height. Still above the trees. I'm gonna rotate the camera this way. And I think if I look up, I'm gonna turn the gimbal up so I can point the camera. Again, I'm just using that left finger on the back of the remote now so we can get a nice view of the range. And again, now I'm gonna I'm going to stop that last recording, otherwise that file will get too big. But I'm just going to kind of slowly back away and raise up a little bit while I film this shot. Um, and then we'll end this little bit of a, well, I'll land it and we'll end the training. So to back away, remember, I'm going to go uh, down on the right control. To go up, I'm going to go up on the left control. So I'm just going to do kind of both of those things. At the same time, so kind of bringing her back down so we can get a nice shot that includes the beach. Now I'll come back in. Maybe turn a little to the left. And maybe come down a little bit more. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more so I can kind of fly into where the canoes are at. Get a shot of that. I'm gonna face her so I can see the drone. Should always have a line of sight or a co-pilot who's watching line of sight for me.
So as you can see, I almost crashed into that tree. Um, so they wanted to give me that warning that I was about to hit a tree. So thank you, drone, for being smart. I'm gonna get back out into our landing zone and bring it back down. So I'm going up high enough to make sure I'm gonna avoid any trees. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. The last recording, I think, I should be plenty high now. Here the drone comes right out over the middle of this open space. If it helps, I can point that camera straight down. When I get to zero, I know that I'm straight down. Make sure I don't land it on anybody's heads. <laughs> How's it, guys? And then can just slowly bring it down. Let's do it too quickly. I'm just on that left controller, bringing it down the left joystick. Drone's getting lower and lower. I can see it on the screen right now, 25 meters, counting down, coming down pretty quick. I don't want it to crash, so I kind of slow it down as it gets to like, you know, between five and 10 meters, slowly bring her down to the ground. And then all I have to do is bring it all the way down and touch it down on the ground and then hold down on the joystick. And by holding down on that left joystick, my rotors are gonna stop. And she's not gonna go anywhere. The drone's not gonna go anywhere now until I try to take off again. So that was it. Um, I hope that was somewhat helpful. We almost crashed. We got pretty good distance. We got pretty good altitude. So yeah, that was a, a, good, little, a good little flight training. And uh, yeah, you'll have to get familiar with this. Most of you, when you're flying it, I'm going to be with you. Um, I'm fortunate to be able to come and join you guys in the field. Um, but I want you guys to get comfortable too, in case some of you who are going to decide to want to get one of these drones for your own community to do your own mapping and, and imaging work. So thank you to Aaron, my wahine, and all of you for watching. Aloha.